Greetings YouTube, so welcome to another edition of the Photo Corner and today we're going to be looking at the triangle. Now the triangle is effectively discussing photography on the basic terms and it comprises of three parts, the shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO. These three elements help control what creates the photographs that you take every day. The same concept has been used in film and digital photography and this is effectively what makes a difference in between automatic and manual photography. So now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to the basic concepts of how each three of them help each other to create the photograph. Now the shutter speed is probably the most thing that gets adjusted by photographers in this day and age. Most cameras will range from at least a minimum speed of 3 frames per second going on to a long exposure of 30 seconds. To adjust this it's primarily using the control dial to make the shutter go faster or slower. Now what normally happens with this is that if you make the shutter go for a bit longer, your image is going to be overexposed, where if you go faster, it is underexposed. If the ISO or aperture isn't compensated, then the shutter speed is going to effectively make the image too dark or too bright. As you can see on the dot on the screen, it basically takes the element all to one side, meaning you have an unbalanced set when it comes to the photograph. So if you look at this example image that I got here, we get to see an image where the aperture and ISO hasn't been changed but the shutter has been made faster. As you can see, it is completely dark virtually and it's hard to pick up on what the object is. This process is effectively repeated whenever you adjust things like the aperture or ISO and not do any of the other elements. We're going to have a look at the example with the aperture. So again, if the aperture is adjusted to be brighter and allow more light through or less light through and the ISO and shutter speed haven't been changed then either your images are going to be overexposed or underexposed so again we're going to look at another image where the shutter or ISO hasn't been changed but the aperture has been. So it's a bit more better than the, with the shutter but again the image is too dark but we can start to make out the camera that's there. And one more time we're going to be looking at this but with the ISO so once again where the aperture and shutter speed haven't been changed but the ISO has been, we get the case of overexposure or underexposure because of the sensitivity that's been put onto the actual sensor itself. And just so you know what the ISO is, it's basically the sensitivity of the sensor. This is something that was carried over from film photography where normally you would buy films that had either ISO 200, 400, 800 and so on. The lower the number, the lower the sensitivity. So this would be ideal for bright sunlights, where if you were shooting at night, you would need a higher ISO, but at a compensation, the image would be a bit more grainier. So with this case, we're going to show two examples, one with the ISO of 200, which looks pretty much normal, maybe slightly underexposed, and with the ISO of 800, it is more overexposed because of the sensitivity of how much light is coming through onto the sensor. So now we come to the issue of where you're making the compensation to help create the better photograph. So maintaining where we are at with the ISO being at a higher or low situation, what we need to do is make an adjustment. Normally what is adjusted first is the shutter speed. So if we look at the situation where the aperture is maintained but the shutter speed is adjusted, compensating against the high or low ISO, the image starts to become a bit more clearer but may not be as fully complete as we'd like to be. So all that's left here is to adjust the aperture to help bring the image to a much more suitable quality. And as you can see we're back in the centre once again. Much like with this case it's a bit of a tilt and shift method where you're trying to balance the ball in the middle of a triangle and the hardest part is to try and keep it in the centre as best possible. So let's go back to our image where we've got the ISO, the aperture and the shutter speed all at the right point to get that good photograph. This is why SLRs can appear to be very intimidating because of the fact that they have all these manual modes and have a lot of compensation to do when it comes to taking a photograph. But it's always important to remember that they have auto modes but they also have modes where you can do some manual adjustments and the camera does the rest like aperture and shutter priority. They do the elements of adjusting the shutter while it compensates for you. I hope that this method of using the triangle has helped create further understanding in how the photography process works. But if you have any questions or anything that doesn't make sense, feel free to post in the comment and I'll help make things understandable for you. I hope you've been having a good Easter weekend and that it continues on into Sunday. So don't eat too many eggs and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a nice day and take it easy.